Hello there, this is Alana Tucky, the lead faculty for Math 131. This video tutorial is going to sort of set you on your path for doing project number two. If you will, I'm um, putting you on your mathematical yellow brick road, so to speak. So this project is all about focusing on modeling, i.e. regression, which we've done a lot in the course. So now you're going to have to apply that knowledge to a whole bunch of different situations. Use your critical thinking skills, be able to figure out which is the best model and so on, which is really a key thing for the sciences in particular, like chemistry, biology, physics, as well as sociology and education, those kinds of social sciences, as well as engineering and other fields. All right, so you're going to have to do two tasks. The first task is looking at the Center for Disease Control data on diabetes. And the second task is going to be looking at the population density from the US Census. To do both of these tasks, you will have to use a randomly assigned state from your instructor. So you will put your state right here to remind yourself what you get, like Michigan or Minnesota or Massachusetts or whatever. So turning it in, you will fill in all your answers in your student submission packet. Everything must be legible, clearly organized, labeled, clued units, all that good stuff. Make sure you show work for any by hand problems. Make sure that all your graphs and tables are labeled and clearly organized. So that would be in this packet part over here. Right? So most of it's pretty organized for you, but for whenever you have to do things by hand, I think coming down here, right? So finding this by hand, finding some other stuff by hand. Make sure you show all your work and make sure it's all clear and easy to follow for your instructor. All righty. So let me go back. Oh, one other thing. Um, you'll notice that I say to attach a printout. So what you're going to do is you're going to make three different graphs in a table and you would attach them after the problem. So these three graphs and table are relating to the CDC data. So you do all your CDC work for the first two pages and then you put in your three graphs and table right here, table first, then the graphs. And then you do task number two do all three pages of that and then attach the three graphs and table for that one at the end of that. So there should all in all be six graphs and two tables attached into this packet. All right, so you attach the CDC ones after that CDC data, you attach the census ones after the census data. All right, so let me go back. Um, and then as always, we encourage you to work together to collaborate, but Everything you turn in must, of course, be your own. Otherwise, that's academic dishonesty, which could result in all sorts of severe consequences. Um, that includes the tutors. They, uh, you can't have the tutor do it for you. They can kind of push you along in a certain direction, but they can't do the problem for you. And then I will eventually have a link right here for this video tutorial right here. <laughs> so I'll put a link up there. All right, now I'm not going to do all of this for you, obviously, but I wanted to kind of set you on your way for how to find this data and what to do with it. So you can type this link or you can just, I can just click on it because I got skills, but you would have to type it in. And that was an underscore, by the way. If I go back to my bit.ly link, here it is. So that's CDC underscore diabetes. And the underscore is shift dash. So if you hit the dash key with a shift held down, um, the dash key is to the left of the equals key up on the top row of buttons on your um, keyboard, so just in case you're wondering. All right, so this is the CDC data right here, and there's the map down here. And you're going to click on or select your state. You can do it this way with the pull down menu, especially if you have Rhode Island, that might be easier because Rhode Island's so tiny. Um, but Or you could click on the state itself. One way or another, you can get to your state. I'm going to use a state that nobody can use, which is Puerto Rico, because it's not really a state, although it probably should be. All right, and so in here, there's a whole bunch of diabetes information. So we have complication factors, we have health status for the disability, um, as judged by doctors, we have whether they've had eye exams recently, we have all sorts of information. So you can pick whichever data set you like. So choose something that looks interesting to you. So you choose something that, you know, are you interested in obesity levels in America, smoking levels in America? Are you interested in eye exams? You know, I like my eyeballs. I want to keep them in, etc. So choose something that looks interesting. That was kind of boring. I always like the more fun ones personally. But choose whatever you like. Ooh, look at that one. That's plummeting. Nice. Okay. So whatever you pick, that's fine. And then 
you're going to want to to know that like this was the whether they've gotten the influenza vaccine in the last year and then you're going to recreate this in excel now i have excel right here in my menu but if you don't have excel you can just type excel down there in the bottom menu and press enter and it should show up actually i, sh I shouldn't have done it that way i'm sorry if you type excel and then go click on it that's perfect all right, so here's Excel, your spreadsheet program, which you've hopefully seen before. And you're just gonna kind of recreate your data. So let me go back to my data here. So I want year. Oh, and notice what I'm doing to make my life simpler. I'm kind of making my window smaller and kind of moving it over so I can see it. So just so I can type, I won't leave it this small all the way. All right, now this particular state didn't have any data for 1993 and 1995, so I'm not going to bother putting those in. I'm going to start with 1997, because that's the first year I have data for. Sorry, it's boring to watch me type. I apologize. All right, now don't write the word crude. What crude is standing for is the raw number. It's the crude number, raw number. So it, but what is it? In this case, it's the percentage of adults who've received the flu vaccination in the last year, right? That's what it really is. You're probably going to want to keep this information someplace, right? But essentially crude is a percentage, right? So these, and I think all of these ones are percents and you can see it right there. It says percent. So let me go back. I'm just going to type percentage for now and then I'll do something else with it in a minute. So 29, 30, 30, 32, 32, 32, 29.3, 27.9. Sorry, I know it's boring to listen to me talk. There we go. Okay, so those are all typed in. Now, as we did in some previous um, videos, we're going to make this column as wide as it should be. So if you kind of let your mouse hover between the B and the C, so it turns into that double-sided arrow, you double click and it'll make the graph or the column as wide as you need it to be. And then I just did it for A as well. And then take the time to make your graph, your table a little bit prettier. So I'm going to make this kind of pretty. I'm going to, I'm going to center everything. So I just added a border right here with the border key. And now I'm going to center everything here with the little center bit. And that turns them all center. And I want these to be bold. So I'm going to highlight the year and the percentage and make them bold. And actually I'm going to shade them, you know, make it, make it pop. Right. You're going to have to print this out. So you want it to look kind of pretty. And just for the second, I'm, I'm actually quite zoomed in. If I go back to 100%, that's how small it's going to look. And it's going to look that small kind of when you print it, which I don't really like that. So let's make it larger so we can really see what everything is. And I did that by highlighting all the data and then just going up here and changing my font size right, to something good size. Okay. All right, now there's one other thing I want to do, and that is I want to include what the heck this data was. So there's all diff sorts of different data sets, so it's kind of important to know which one you included in your problem. So I'm just going to go up here and kind of copy. So hi I'm highlighting all of that. I'm holding down my left mouse key, and I'm kind of moving across it. And I'm going to hit Control-C, and then I'm going to go back Oopsie, to Excel. There it is. And I'm going to paste it. Okay, now it, it did this, which, you know, ugh, don't want that. So how do I get it to stop doing that? Well, you see up here where it says wrap text. If I unclick that, then it's not going to wrap anymore. If you don't see the wrap text thing, you can always just type it yourself, right? Put it somewhere. You've got to know what your data set was someplace. All right. Awesome. So now what else do we need? Let me go back to the project. All right, so we know how to make a table. We know how to gather the data. Um, oh, one other thing I want to show you is how to insert a column. So let me go back here. So I'll click on letter B. There it is. And then I right click insert. And I'm going to label this new column T. and then you would fill in your T values based on whatever you choose as your starter year, but I'm not going to do that for you because that's part of your project. So you have now how to insert the column and then you've got to create your own starter year and everybody's is going to be different because the data sets are all kind of different. And then you're going to fill in your values for T. Wonderful. Now the other thing you're going to need to do is make scatter diagrams 
and insert trend lines. So let me just remind you that you've already learned how to do that, hypothetically speaking, in my lecture videos. So hold on one sec. There, we're gonna go to youtube.com slash J. This is my page. And down here, whoopsie, we have, I'm sorry, it wasn't the lecture videos, it's the technology tutorials, Math 131 technology tutorials. So if you click in there, and in here we've done Excel tutorials as the course has gone along. Um, chapter 2.1, I believe, has how to make scatter diagrams, or maybe it's 2.2, I think it might be 2.2. So how to make scatter diagrams, how to do regression for linear is in there for Excel. And then exponential has it in section 4.4, I believe. So there it is, 4.5. The Excel tutorial for 4.5 has exponential. And the quadratic one is, I believe, in 7.7. Seven. Ooh, I don't know why I have two seven sevens. I'm gonna have to delete one of those. So, oh no, that's calculator. That's why this is Excel. So you have to pay attention to the Excel tutorials. So how to do it is all in there. How to make pretty graphs and all of those are all in those technology tutorials. So if you have not watched those before, which you should have, you now can watch them and figure out how to do that piece of your project. So those are all in there, and those are all the questions you have to answer. Everything is good. Okay, so now let's do the other one. So this is the census population. So it's census underscore population was that link. There it is, sorry, census underscore population, just so you can see it. And it'll lead you to this website. And on this website has the, I'm gonna zoom in just so you can see it better. It has the years 1910 through 2010. It has all the different states and it has their population and their people per square mile, which is actually what we're interested in, which is the population density. How many people are there per square mile? So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna take your state, you're gonna put in these years for years, and you're gonna take your state's values for population density. So let's see, I believe Puerto Rico is in here at the bottom. There it is. So I'm gonna type these up. So hold on one second. So what you do, you can create a new tab. So I can call this the CDC tab. And then I'm going to go down here, double click. I'm going to call this the population density. Okay. And then let's see, because I'm going to, and oh, while you're doing it, haha, you probably should save it somewhere, right? I mean, you want to not lose this file. So save it someplace. I mean, put your name on it, you know, project one or project two, 131. So I, I have to save it that way, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna put in my year. And then I'm gonna put in my population density. So you could say people per square mile, you could say um, population density, whatever works for you. And again, this is really small, so I'm gonna highlight these columns, I'm gonna make them like 20 font. And double, double click, I made that arrow turn into that double-sided arrow and double clicked again and then that'll help for being able to see what I'm actually doing here 40 1950 again you have to print this stuff out so let me double check these years I think it started in 10 and went every 10 years so where is it there it is of course it's the very top yep 10 20 30 40 okay so that'll be the same for everybody 10, 20, 30, 40, and ends in 2010. All right, and then the people per square mile, let me just show you that, and then I'll just pause you and go type them in. So 326.5, 379.6, let me go type those up. Okay, 326.5, and so on. There they are, right there. All right, and let me just show you real quick. When you wanna print, you can just go file, print, and then you want to say I want to print the active sheet or just print that selection. So I selected the table so I would print that selection. I personally don't like that this table is not pretty so I'm going to make it pretty by bolding my title, making it gray, and putting borders on the whole thing. Alright, that's the end of this tutorial. Hope it was helpful.